Let's have a look at another case where we can have serial correlation of errors. So we have this graph here, the regression between income and age. And we can see that the actual observations, these blue dots, have a quadratic shape. So the regression is not linear. However, let's say we do it linear. Now, when we, when we plot, when we plot the data against this line, we can see that we have, we have consistently error terms. So for instance, on this small range over here, we can see that our regression line, so our estimated values are higher than the blue dots. So we are overestimating the income meaning that we have this correlation of error terms on this range where we overestimate the income for low values of age. Let's say at the age of maybe we're starting at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. In this range, we are consistently overestimating our income, meaning that we have a correlation of the error terms. If we are overestimating for the age of 10, we're likely to estimate for the age of 11 and so on. So here we have an overestimation. That's why we have this correlation of the errors there, of the errors. Now we go for instance, on this range over here, just as an example, and we look at the error terms, we look at the differences between the blue dots and the regression line, the yellow line, we can see that we have the same pattern we are consistently now underestimating the income, whereas the actual value is higher. And if we are underestimating for these values over here, let's say starting at, for instance, at the age of 14, we're also likely to, to, to underestimate for 15, for 16, for 17, for 18, and so on. So on this range, again, we have this trend, this correlation between the errors. If we have these error terms for this observation, for this age, we're also likely to have it for the next age, for the next age, and for the next age, and so on. So another example of why we have this correlation of the error terms over here, where we are underestimating in this range. So underestimating. Again, we have correlation of the errors. And the same logic goes for this range. If we have error terms in this period, we are likely, not in this period, but for this uh, age, let's say that's the age of, for instance, 31, then for 32, 33, 34, we also have these differences between the blue dot and the yellow line, meaning that we are not regressing accurately. Now, why would this be the case? Well, in the beginning, we can see that there's a positive effect of age on income, meaning that in the beginning, our income increases with age, which would make sense because when we're young, the additional experience in the labor market helps us earn more money. So the value of the experience when we are young is quite high. Now, once we get to a threshold and we start reaching an age of 50, 60 years old, we're starting to retire. So in that case, the older we are, the less money we can earn because either we work less or just our value in the market is less since we're not as capable of keeping up with all the demand and the technology and so on. So the value of the experience goes down eventually, plus the fact that we are more likely to retire. So that's why, that's why we would have a decreasing income after a certain threshold. So our income is falling. Now, how do we show the fact that we have this, this quadratic effect? In the beginning it's rising and then it's falling. When we would like to show it by including the quadratic eff effect in the regression. For instance, beta 2 times h squared, where beta 2 should be a negative number. And what does this negative number show? The negative number shows, the negative number shows that the quadratic shape would be downwards. So it would have the following, it would have the following fit. It would fit like, like a curve, not like a line. And in that case, if we compare the error terms on this, on this curve now, we can see that the error terms are uniformly distributed around this curve instead of having all these all these high errors consistently for certain ranges so this curve now includes the effect of the uh, of the quadratic effect so in that case the correlation of the error terms disappears hope this makes sense and we are done